Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I'm here with another book haul. Uh, after a few months of uh, cutting back on my uh, book shopping, I decided I wanted to uh, engage in some uh, upcoming uh, trips to some uh, bookstores. Uh, I would like to visit some of my favorites uh, in addition to uh, paying a visit to some bookstores in Philadelphia. I was uh, doing some research and uh, made myself a list of uh, all of the uh, active bookstores that I could find. And a lot of them seemed impressive, uh, but uh, today I'm going to be talking about my trip to uh, one of my absolute favorite bookstores uh, in uh, the Book Garden in Cream Ridge, New Jersey. Uh, it's just a great experience every time I go. Uh, it's such this. It's such a great wonderland of uh, used books for reasonable price. And uh, George, who owns uh, the Book Garden, is just a remarkable guy. Uh, you can engage in a uh, very uh, casual uh, conversation with him about uh, books, reading, bookstore industry, and he finds that anybody that comes into a store, uh, and uh, especially if they come in uh, consistently, is a friend of his. So it's just it's such a it's just a great experience. It's worth going. So uh, now I should tell you about the books that I got uh, on my third visit uh, already. As I mentioned before, uh, this is the only place where I'd get uh, Agatha Christie novels because uh, to get them at one sixty a piece for the paperbacks, uh, you, you just can't beat it. It is a remarkable deal and uh, it's the same content, too, so uh, there, I wouldn't see uh, any other reason to get them anywhere besides uh, the book garden. But I got uh, the, secret at the Secret Adversary, which is a Tommy and Tuppets uh, uh, novel. Uh, got Murder on the Links, uh, which is uh, Perel. Uh, N or M, which is also uh, Tommy and Tuppets, as far as I know. And I got Cat Among the Pigeons, which is a, a Perot uh, novel. And uh, I got them for 160 each, and it was quite, I'm looking forward to getting into some more uh, Agatha Christie. I'm thinking that, and then there were none, is going to be a uh, front runner, which there they have it as uh, Ten Little Indians, or that's the one that I got. Next book that I got is something that I've heard about time and time again in the uh, booktube community, and I heard so many great things about it, and that is The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. And uh, this has to do with a, uh, a, a prince from another planet's uh, journey to Earth because of his uh, sense of, uh, because of his feelings uh, on his uh, other planet and his need to explore uh, ours. And the other uh, mass market paperback that I got is uh, Friendly Fire uh, by C.D.B. Bryan, which has to do with a, uh, a man uh, during the uh, Vietnam War. His name is Michael Mullen. He left his uh, town in Iowa to uh, take part in the Vietnam War. He was probably drafted. Uh, he told his parents that he would be back, but uh, unfortunately, uh, when he came back, it was in a coffin. Which that is what is in the that's what's on the back of the book, so it's not a spoiler. But it explores the uh, the, the ripples that uh, make up the uh, the uh, the establishment and all of the uh, and everything that's taken place. Uh, the reason it's called Friendly Fire is because it wasn't uh, through a uh, Vietnamese uh, skirmish or uh, from a uh, Vietnamese resident uh, or a Vietnamese soldier uh, that he got killed, but instead uh, it was from Friendly Fire from his own uh, 
army, which really uh, it was it was one of many issues that uh, took place in the uh, war in Vietnam, and uh, it was a very uh, it was immensely uh, unpopular among the uh, general public. I also got two. Uh, trade paperbacks. Uh, the first one is The Best American Science Writing of 2006, edited by Atul Gawand, and uh, the series editor is uh, Jesse Cowan. Uh, there are uh, several uh, science essays that are in here uh, that really were uh, attention-grabbing. Uh, some of them uh, explored uh, obesity, uh, autism, uh, homosexuality, and so much more. And I definitely am uh, looking forward to uh, either dipping in and out of this or just uh, reading it outright. I should also make mention to the fact that the little, this version of The Little Prince was translated from the French by Catherine Woods. The next thing that I picked up was something that I had no idea was... Uh, even a uh, even existed, but I'm so glad it uh, it was out there. And that is the uh, novels of Hermann Hesse, a study in theme and structure by Theodor Zielkowski. Uh, and this has to uh, do with a uh, this is a critical overview of uh, Hesse's uh, novels. Uh, it starts by exploring his uh, works in general, uh, but it uh, then goes into uh, in-depth study on uh, six, his six major uh, works uh, in uh, Demian, Siddhartha, Steppenwolf, Narcissus and Goldman, A Journey to the East, and Glassbead Game. Uh, these were probably the six novels of his that he uh, saw the most uh, approval in. Uh, and I think that these were the novels that uh, are probably... He had other... He, he wrote several others, but uh, those were his earlier works, and uh, they seem to explore a different uh, side of him, more so a uh, rising as a writer. Uh, these explore a more uh, uh, intuitive... Uh, satisfaction. But I really look forward to uh, reading up on uh, the arguments that are presented here. Next thing that I picked up was something that caught my attention on my second visit, but uh, I didn't get it that time, but I'm glad that it was there uh, when I went this time, because uh, it uh, really caught my uh, attention, and I hope to uh, look into it even more, and that is... Uh, Classic Scandinavian cooking. More than 200 of the best easy-to-prepare recipes from Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland, and Iceland by Nika Hazelton. Uh, uh, Nika Hazelton has written uh, several uh, cookbooks, many of which are cultural-based. I got her uh, Italian uh, cookbook, uh, and uh, this one uh, explores uh, a multitude of... Uh, recipes uh, that uh, range from uh, things you would find on a smorgasbord, uh, the uh, appetizers, uh, entrees, uh, especially that concentrate on fish, specific meats. And then she talks a lot about desserts and cakes, which she's got a lot of uh, desserts, cakes, and, and uh, pastries and cookies. Uh, which it really seems uh, very appetizing. Uh, on the back, uh, she makes mention to a lot of uh, uh, those that are specified by country, which it's really interesting to uh, read these and also get uh, a brief idea of uh, the uh, culinary mind of so many different countries. Next thing that I got was uh, the future of the brain: the promise and perils of tomorrow's neuroscience by Stephen Rose. And 
This is quite interesting how it explores uh, uh, the uh, impact of how uh, different practices, medications, and what technology has done to uh, the, uh, the human brain and what the future holds for uh, the way we uh, perceive things, the way we think, and uh, what the brain will be like in decades and years and uh, centuries to come. It, it's definitely uh, going to be fascinating. It, it definitely sounds fascinating. Next thing that I got really caught my attention because of my great interest in uh, speculation, and that is the collected what if. Eminent historians imagine what, what might have been. And there are essays from different uh, people, uh, but it was edited by Robert Cowley. And... Uh, Different, questions, different historical questions are asked, uh, such as, uh, what if Pontius Pilate hadn't ordered Jesus Christ's crucifixion? Uh, what if Abraham Lincoln hadn't abolished slavery? What if a Confederate aide hadn't accidentally lost General Robert E. Lee's plans for invading the North? What if the Allied invasion of D-Day had failed? What if Pope Pius XII had spoken, against, spoken out against the Holocaust? What if the Mongols had succeeded in conquering Europe? And there are so many other uh, historical speculations that are uh, looked upon on here. Uh, and uh, from what I've seen here, uh, it's not necessarily in chronological order, but either which way, I'm really eager to look into this. Then I got uh, something I believe I had on my master list uh, for quite some time, uh, and that is RFK, uh, a candid biography of Robert F. Kennedy by C. David Heyman. And he's written about uh, plenty of other uh, modern historical uh, topics. Uh, he's, written, he's written about... Uh, Jackie Kennedy Onassis, uh, he's written about Elizabeth Taylor, and so many more things. Uh, but in this uh, book, he uh, explores uh, RFK in a straightforward demeanor, uh, talking about his uh, rise into politics as uh, him as an attorney general to his brother, his brother John F. Kennedy, uh, his uh, him being the senator of New York, his presidential run in 1968 that ended in uh, him being murdered. Uh, and it also talks about his uh, relations with uh, Jackie Kennedy and his uh, personal life as well, his other uh, affairs and the one woman that he had an affair with uh, and how that woman... Uh, mysteriously uh, was killed in that crash uh, when uh, Ted Kennedy drove into uh, Chappaquiddick. And then I got four anthologies, which uh, they're anthologies. I, uh, they are really uh, intriguing, I would say. Uh, they have uh, such a great selection of what you can get. Uh, I got the best short stories of 1931 and the yearbook of the American short story, which is edited by Edward J. O'Brien. And then I got the same, uh, the same thing only from 1932. Uh, this, is a, uh, this was an annual series. Uh, I have to do some research uh, as to how long uh, these uh, went forward, but that these, that these continued. But the fact that these were, uh, this really gives a, uh, a great perspective of uh, what life was like during the, uh, the, the doldrums of the uh, Great Depression. Uh, this was uh, right into the uh, halfway point and leading out of uh, Herbert Hoover's uh, tenure as president. 
and uh, just exploring what literature was like back then is uh, definitely uh, captivating. I also got uh, the Cavalcade of the North, which was uh, selected and put together by George E. Nelson. Uh, this is uh, two complete novels and 24 shorter pieces of Canadian literature. And uh, contributors include uh, Hugh McClellan, uh, Morley Callaghan, uh, W.G. Hardy, uh, Bruce Hutchinson, Mazo de la Roche, uh, Gwen Ringwood, Patrick Slater, Edward A. McCourt, and so many other names. Uh, I'm really looking forward to checking this out. And the last thing that I got while I was there is H.G. Wells' 30 Strange Stories, a classic collection of fantastic and mysterious tales. H.G. Uh, Wells is a, a great pioneer, uh, along with uh, Jules Verne, uh, when it comes to uh, the genre of science fiction. And H.G. Uh, Wells, and the way that he explores uh, science fiction and fantasy is just... Uh, spectacular, and I'm really looking forward to uh, his uh, to reading his short stories. Already, those were the uh, the 16 uh, books that I got while I was at the book garden. Uh, I'm gonna in the thumbnail. If you if you saw the thumbnail to this video, uh, you'll see them all together. Uh, everything that I got. I want to thank you for tuning into this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And for now, and as always, I encourage you to keep reading.